So around this time, every year, people start doing the Daniel Fast. And that's about at the beginning of every year. Um, I see people doing the Daniel Fast. Different churches are calling fast, and it's the Daniel Fast. And I can't help but wonder, are we truly staying true to the fast that Daniel did? Are we truly staying true to what Daniel did? Or are we just altering our eating habits for a certain period of time or trying to get healthier? Are we doing the Daniel fast or are we dieting? That starts to be my question. So today we are actually going to do a study on what the Daniel fast is at its origin, how Daniel fasted, and are we incorporating that same posture and position into our fast. If this is your first time here, hello and welcome. My name is Dominique Young and we study the Bible here, y'all, at Faith Mama's Tribe. We actually do it every day, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and we would love for you to join us. And then I sometimes do these videos on the weekends that where we get to dig into a particular topic. And so if that sounds like something interesting to you, if you would like to learn more and study more of the Bible and have more faith-based content, then this is your channel. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. All right. So we are going to study Daniel chapter 10, where the idea for the Daniel fast actually comes from. But before we do, let's go ahead and pray. And then we're going to open up Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that you would help us as we study Daniel chapter 12, that you would help us to see and understand the fast that Daniel did. And Lord God, that you would, if you're calling us to do this type of fast, that you would help us to align our posture similarly to the way that Daniel's posture was when he um, completed this fast, Lord. So Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory, honor, and praise, and we ask you to have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pull up Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Uh, this here is from the NIV translation, but you can feel free to read from whatever translation you have available to you. We're going to read this section of scripture two times through. The first time, get a picture in your mind of everything that's going on. The second time, go ahead and write in your journal, highlight key words. Then we'll take a little bit of time for personal reflection, and then we'll dig in to a little bit of teaching around this scripture. So if that sounds good to you, it's good to me. Here we go. Daniel chapter 10, and it reads, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotion at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of brushed bron burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I left, I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking. And as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Let's read this one more time. This time, 
go ahead and highlight keywords, take notes in your journal of what's standing out to you. Here we go. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, carefully consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. Then I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. All right, we are going to take a few moments to reflect because before I start talking and teaching on some of the things that are co coming out to me, I want to make sure that we have set aside time to really bring our reflections to the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and pray. And after that, I will go ahead and teach on some of the things that are really standing out to me that I believe are important as you go into a Daniel fast. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity to study Daniel chapter 10. We pray that you would help us to truly understand this fast that Daniel completed Lord, and that you would help us to take that posture as we go into our fasting time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's take two minutes to reflect on Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Here we go.
All right. I would love to hear some of the things that are standing out to you in the comments below. Let's talk a little bit about this scripture that we just read. So Daniel is coming into this time of fasting from a point of mourning. He is mourning. And the question may be, why is he mourning? Well, if we look at the time period that Daniel mentioned, we can glean a lot of what was going on in Israel's history. This was a time where the first amount of the first um, of Israel was returning back to Israel after spending all this time in captivity. And they were going through the leadership of Ezra, but it wasn't going very well. There was a lot of things that, that were going on at this time that were kind of not that great for Israel. And it would make sense that, that Daniel would be mourning. It would make sense that Daniel would be seeking the Lord. But let us think about how Daniel came into this fast. He came in with a lament, a cry out to God. He came there with the fast of desperation. So this is the first posture of Daniel. He was desperate. Daniel was in a posture of grief and desperation. It said that he was mourning. He was in a posture of lament. He came to this fast not to lose weight. He came to this fast not to get healthy. He came to this fast with a posture of desperation. He was desperate to hear from God. And this is very, very important because this showed us why he did what he did. So he came with a posture of desperation. Then he came with a posture of determination. He was determined. He was seeking the Lord. And we can see that from what the angel said when the angel came about how Daniel had a question. He sought understanding. And then also he was dedicated. It was not just one day. It was not just two days. He was there for three weeks in this posture of desperation and determination. He was dedicated. He he was dedicated, right? And so we see these three postures in Daniel's fast. The question is, do we see these three postures when we go into a Daniel fast? Or are we just doing it because our church leadership said, this is what we're doing? Are we just doing it because we want to lose weight? Are we going into it with the posture of desperation? Like I desperately want to hear from God. Are we going into it with the posture of determination? I'm determined to stay here as long as I need to, to hear from God. Are we going into it with the posture of dedication? No matter what, I'm going to seek out God here. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to pursue him because Daniel had these postures. He refused to be distracted. So he removed some things. Let's repeat that. He refused to be distracted. So he removed some things. Again, he was not trying to lose weight. He was not trying to, to, um, to get healthy. He wanted to not be distracted by what his mission was, which was to seek the Lord. So these are some things that he removed so that they would not distract him. The first thing is he removed uh, things that would distract him, which is food with long prep time. Things like meats, right? That would take a long time to cook. Things like bread. At that time, they couldn't just, you know, they weren't just going places to get bread. Sometimes they had to prep that bread. Um, and there was things that they had to do. Now they could have gone and purchased the bread and things like that, but there was a long prep time associated with breads. They may have gotten doughs and flowers and trying to make the breads, but he removed anything that had long prep time because long prep time would distract him. He removed things that would hinder his ability to focus. We see that he removed wine. He removed wine. We know that wine has the ability to hinder our focus. Daniel did not want to be distracted in any way. So he removed things that would hinder his ability to focus. And then he removed things that would attempt to soothe the pain. Sugary foods. We know this from our, probably our own emotional eatings, right? That sugary foods attempt to, to soothe pain that we may be in. Daniel wanted to keep that place of desperation. He wanted to seek after the Lord and keep that lament. So we see that he removed sugary foods. This is important because this shows us why we're removing things. The first thing that I want to talk about on this is the fact that Daniel removed things that would distract him, food with long prep. I will be honest, I see this often, that when people go into the Daniel fast, they find these fancy new recipes to make, and all you do is spend time looking up recipes and, and finding new ways to eat. That is awesome. That's a great health journey, but that is not the Daniel fast. 
Daniel was set on removing things with long prep times. This was not about learning new recipes. This was about grabbing an apple when you were hungry because there was a little bit of prep time. There was no distraction associated with it. It was not about learning all these new fancy recipes. It was about just putting some salad on your plate and keeping it moving. Things that did not require lengthy prep times because it wasn't about the food. It was about his seeking out of God and he didn't want anything to distract him. He didn't want any distractions. So he moved things with long prep times. So I urge us to remove things with long prep times, remove food items with long prep times. That's going to be like, even in the day, even what we're calling the Daniel fast, let us not spend hours upon hours scouring the internet, trying to find the, the best Daniel fast meal. And instead Be determined to just remove anything with long prep time. This is more of like a raw, you know, raw vegan or very small prep time type of foods, right? Get an apple, put some salad on your plate. Don't think much about it because our mind should be focused on God. Our mind should be focused on Lord. I am seeking you. I am de- I am determined to find you. I am determined to hear from you on a particular plight, right? And so I'm removing any distractions. I'm removing all foods with long prep time. The next thing is he removed anything that would hinder his ability to focus. He removed wine. For some of us, we may not be we may not drink wine. You may not drink alcohol. But if you do, this is the time to remove it. But one thing Daniel did not have was social media. And as we all know, social media hinders our ability to focus. So I believe that this would fall in the wine category. We need to remove anything that would hinder our ability or alter our ability to focus on God. Wine does that internally, but so does social media. And you may have other things in your life that literally hinders your ability to focus when you're so focused on it or when you're consuming this particular thing. And then the last thing is that he removed things that would attempt to soothe the pain. He had removed things that attempted to soothe the pain. And one of the things that we know is sugary foods. It says he got rid of choice breads, breads. We know breads and and foods like that contain a lot of sugar and they are what we call comfort foods, right? Comfort foods, like those delicious breads and, you know, the pot pies with the dough and all that stuff. He got rid of that because he didn't want anything to attend. We can see he wanted to remain in that desperate place. And we know from experience that when we get desperate or overwhelmed or in a place of lament or sorrow, we can easily grab the donuts, right? Just to make ourselves feel better temporarily. But this is not the time for that, right? This is the time to sit in that desperate place that we may be in. So just to recap, if we are going on the Daniel fast, be okay with being in a posture of desperation. That's a posture that should fuel this fast. It shouldn't be that I'm only going on this because my church called it or because it's the beginning of the year and this is just what I do. There should be a posture of desperation that fuels us and that causes us to desire, God, I really desire to hear you on this matter. It should be a determination to hear the Lord, the determination posture and a dedication posture. And with all of these postures combined, there should be a desire to not be distracted because we want to hear God. I would like to suggest if we are going on the Daniel fast to change our eating habits, that we call it something else, right? We let it, we let it be known that we are on a diet, that we are on a healthy food journey, and that we are, we are eating a whole food diet without meat right? But if we are going on the Daniel fast, let our posture be similar to that of Daniel, where we are determined, where we are desperate, where we are dedicated, and where we are willing to remove the distractions that long prep foods cause, where we are willing to remove the distractions that sugary foods cause, that we are willing to remove the distractions that wines and alcohols cause, right? And that we are willing to even take it a step further for the generation that we are in, that we will remove any distractions that may not be food related. We have to understand Daniel didn't have social media. Daniel didn't have Netflix. Daniel didn't have Hulu, but we do. So if any of those things fall into any of these categories that would distract us, let us be willing to also 
remove those things from our fast so that we can seek the Lord, so that we will not be distracted, so that we will not be overwhelmed by the things that we may be looking at, but so that food doesn't take up a long part of what we're doing. I encourage all of us, the Daniel fast should not be a time where we are trying out fancy new recipes. That's going to take entirely too much time of scouring the internet, trying to find things to cook. It's going to defeat the purpose of the Daniel fast, right? To be, to be undistracted, right? So this is not the time to look up those really cool vegan recipes that you've been wanting to try. This is the time to go to some of your key things that you know that will not distract you, don't have long prep time, you don't have to be scouring in your cookbooks, but you can stay and remain dedicated and desperate for the Lord the entire time without the distraction of lengthy prep time foods, without the distraction of comfort foods, right? But with really, truly a focus on God. I hope this was helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if this is something that you loved and you want to do more Bible studies like this one, then I invite you to join us for Mornings with Jesus live every Monday and Friday at 6 a.m. where we read a chapter of the Bible every single day and we talk about it live action. So if this is something that you are interested in. If you want a safe place to ask questions and things like that, please join us every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. for Mornings with Jesus. And let me know in the comments, are you starting the Daniel fast? And if so, what are some things that, what are some things you're going to take into this fast, a posture you're going to take into this fast? And if there's any prayer requests that you have, you're like literally seeking God for a particular thing and you would love for us as a community to join you in prayer, drop that in the comments below as well. I look forward to hearing from you and I will be praying for you as you go on your Daniel fast this year. Bye for now.